Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window from today. And a lot like yesterday, a lot of clouds in the morning giving way to those blue skies in the afternoon. And boy, it just turned out to be a beauty today as we look down at the Wenatchee Valley from our Wenatchee Heights cross camera. And you can see some of those blue skies, still plenty of clouds. There were some sprinkles, very isolated today, but all in all, a nice one. And as we look through the rest of the week and into Friday, not much will change. We will see a cold front pass by, through tonight and into tomorrow morning. That'll bring us some clouds tomorrow and slightly cooler temperatures before we warm right back up to near 60 by the time we get into Friday. When we come back a little bit later on, we'll talk more about your weekend weather forecast and much more, so stay tuned for that. Now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. The city of East Wenatchee is negotiating with Douglas County to annex about 500 acres of more than 600 homes into its city limits. Lake Chelan Health is closing in on completion of its new hospital, which will replace the existing structure built in 1972. And Chelan County's elected assessor, Dina Walter, will act as the county's community development director until a new executive is picked for that department. But first, our top story tonight, a vehicle being driven by an alleged drunk driver on I-90 yesterday slammed into a Washington State Department of Transportation truck. The Washington State Patrol said the WashDOT truck was providing traffic control for a disabled vehicle that was blocking I-90 west of Easton about 3.30 p.m. when the sedan ran into a DOT attenuator. There were no injuries, but the driver was arrested for DUI. Attenuators are credited with saving numerous WashDOT workers from injury or even death. The city of East Wenatchee is negotiating with Douglas County to annex about 500 acres and more than 600 homes into its city limits. If approved by both the city council and board of county commissioners, East Wenatchee would gain about 1,300 new residents. The areas to be annexed include the commercial areas and neighborhoods south of 3rd and 4th Streets and west of Kentucky Avenue. Three residential areas on East Wenatchee's northern outskirts would also become part of the city. A public hearing must be held before the annexation can go forward, and that has not yet been scheduled. The city hopes to complete the annexation by June 30th. Lake Chelan Health is closing in on completion of its new hospital, which will replace the existing structure built in 1972. The $44 million project should finish construction later this year. Facilities Director Ken Peters offered a video walkthrough of the project so far. So from registration over there, they brought me through this door and they do a triage. The triage here, basically you're going to check to see what, what the issue is, vital signs, possibly weight and all that. And depending on severity of injuries, you may have to go back and sit if you don't really have that severe of an injury, or they'll gonna take you to one of the exam rooms or the trauma room. All of our exam rooms, trauma room, we have a airborne isolation room. Uh, if you needed to be deconned, you'd come in from directly outside. The door at the end of this hallway is where all of our ambulance crews would come in to bring the patient directly. This section here, is for the nurse's station for both pre-op and post-op. Once you uh, came out of pre-op, they'd put you on a gurney or whatever to wherever you needed to be, whether it was a procedure or surgery. This hallway here, through the doors right here is our surgical suite where we have our two operating rooms. And right around the corner, right here is our procedural room. Chelan County's elected assessor, Dina Walter, will act as the county's community development director until a new executive is picked for that department. Walter has been the assessor since 2011, but worked as assistant community development director from 2002 to 2005. Chelan County commissioners voted Monday to place Walter in the leadership post while they seek a replacement for former community development director Jim Brown, who departed in January. 
The department oversees building, planning, and permitting in unincorporated Chelan County. It's the second time Walter temporarily filled the role at Community Development. She was previously interim director in the spring of 2020 prior to Brown's hiring. Well, when we come back, Chelan County PUD has posted an online survey to get people's thoughts on how the proposed Confluence Parkway would impact PUD-owned property. A non-native trout that's thriving in Grant County's Lake Lenore will undergo a population count next week. And the first of two instructors for Wenatchee High School's new ROTC program has been hired. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Different birds enjoy different types of foods, so it's important to offer all the right things for the birds you want to attract. Sound complicated? It doesn't have to be. Our Flying Start Combo is an all-in-one feeder that attracts all the birds in your backyard with seed, suet, nuts, and fruit. Stop by our store to find out how you can get started feeding the birds. Wild Birds Unlimited. We bring people and nature together. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication-free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel. Welcome back. In another news, as promised, Chelan County PUD has posted an online survey to get people's thoughts on how the proposed Confluence Parkway would impact PUD-owned property, including the Apple Capital Loop Trail, Haran Natural Area, and also Confluence State Park. The survey can be found on the PUD's website at chelanpud.org backslash confluence. Confluence Parkway is a $141 million North Wenatchee Avenue bypass that includes a second bridge over the Wenatchee River. The project has received $49 million in federal funds and is in line to receive the remaining $85 million from the state. Before signing on, the PUD is reaching out to the public for thoughts on a proposed realignment of the loop trail and exchange of six acres of property that are needed to develop the bypass. The PUD will also have two open houses at the Confluence Technology Center March 30th, with the first from 11 to, 4, uh, 11 to 1 p.m., and then the second from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Well, a non-native trout that's thriving in Grant County's Lake Lenore will undergo a population count next week. The State Department of Fish and Wildlife will assess the health of the Lahontan cutthroat trout, a species native to Oregon, Nevada, and California. The agency plans to set 24 trap nets to capture, weigh, and release the fish back into the lake. The survey is not expected to interfere with normal boating and fishing there. The Lahontan trout is an anomaly in Lake Lenore. Not only does it appear to thrive despite the highly alkaline water, but it's also been known to grow an unusual 30 inches in length. Well, the first of two instructors for Wenatchee High School's new ROTC program has been hired. The Air Force approved creation of the local Reserve Officers Training Corps last November and retired Air Force Colonel Ben Akins will help lead it. He arrives from Glenwood Springs, Colorado, where he previously taught and led high school cadets, including his own son. Colonel Akins introduced himself to the Wenatchee School Board last night. I'm an Air Force Academy graduate. Uh, I flew planes for the Air Force for a number of years. Um, I have a master's degree in the equivalent of military history. Uh, when I was looking to retire from the Air Force, I couldn't think of anything more important to do than be a teacher. So JROTC seemed to be a natural fit. I've been instructing junior ROTC 
in Glenwood Springs, Colorado for the last seven years. Life circumstances have changed. Wenatchee has made this incredibly easy for me to come out here. Just as excited as the community is and as excited as the administration is to start a junior ROTC program and the support that I anticipate having from the administration in this community, I think can make this program really, really special. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Nine one one. What is the address of your emergency? Yes, it's me. It's my husband. I think he's had an there's something the matter with him. It was a feeling that I'll never forget, like being able to meet them and know that he survived. Okay, tell me what's happening. Is he conscious? No, he's not. He's okay. not. Okay, take a deep breath for me. I'm getting you help. River Calm means to me that I still have my husband here with me. They're the ones that guided me through saving his life. The 2022 Grant County Fair is excited to announce country supergroup Lone Star. They'll be playing at the fairgrounds Thursday, August 18th. Friday, August 19th, it's Cameron Marlowe. And on Wednesday, August 17th, it's the tribute bands Jukebox Heroes, Barracuda, and Stone in Love. Three of the premier tribute bands on the West Coast. The VIP C tickets go on sale March 11th. The Grant County Fair, August 16th through the 20th. NCW Life really does a great job of exposing our brand. It's a little scary at first, right? You, you're just throwing money out there hoping it comes back. Uh, and to see those results come back through and see people walk through the door and say, hey, saw your, uh, saw your TV advertisement. Um, those are the kinds of things that you see the return on. And when you look at the cost spent, uh, you know you're making a return on it. There's a huge market here and market potential, and they are a great avenue for that. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Artists are being asked to submit their ideas for a new mural in downtown Wenatchee. The mural will be an upgrade to an existing mural at 11 North Wenatchee Avenue next to the Antique Mall of Wenatchee. In tonight's feature story, Wake Up Wenatchee Valley's Dan Koontz talked with Downtown Association Director Linda Hagland today about what they're looking for with the new mural. With this. We are. It's, we're calling it our 2022 mural, be, mural project downtown. A special thank you to the owners, um, Debbie and Jay, that own the Antique Mall, allowing us to, they own this piece of wood right here, to allow us to give this a facelift and an upgrade. So we're asking if you're an artist and a mural project might be something you're interested in, we have a call for artists right now. And what we're hoping for is that we can, by October, update this and have a new mural in downtown. Now, there are some certain guidelines, and I'm going to ask you what some of these things mean. First of all, referencing the past, downtown is historic. All of these buildings are 100 years old, if not older. That's probably the most important of all the elements it wants to tie into the overall aesthetic, does it not? It is, and what people love about this downtown are the buildings, right? These great old buildings that um, have a lot of renovation going on in them. So some tie to that would be really nice. We like that. What currently exists is fine, but it doesn't really say Wenatchee. It could be almost anywhere. Mm -hmm, exactly. And the artists that did this did a really great job, and it has lasted a long time. But like everything, we have to revisit, is it time to do something new and different? And that's what we think the time is now. And representing the diversity of this community, this place is as more diverse than it has ever been before, and that's, that's a critical element. It is a critical element. We want this to look and feel like where we are, right? And where we are is a lot of different things. The diversity of this area, it's geographic diversity, it's ethnic diversity, it's age diversity. It is a lot of different things that diversity, and we want to capture that this is, you know you're in downtown Wenatchee. You know you're in Wenatchee, you're here. And that's what we're hopeful for. And this is one of the very few unbuilt upon lots in all of downtown Wenatchee, and it, it, it's gonna stay that way for a while, so you might as well make this look good. It is, and then, the, um, again, the property owner 
Jay and Debbie have been very, very open that whatever they do in the future here, that we will incorporate this mural somewhere in the future of this space. So it isn't just we're going to do a mural temporarily. This will be long term. What a fun way, if you're an artist, right, to put your mark on something. But this is a, 60, a 50 foot by 16 feet high canvas. This is a big canvas. And what a fun thing. If you were an artist, I don't even begin to figure out how to do that. But hopefully that, that we'll have people who will want to partner with us and do this. Let's take a look now at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a great Wednesday. Now we're on the downhill slide to the weekend. And today, a lot like yesterday, wasn't it? We saw a mix of clouds and sun. More clouds, though, than sun. But it's still a nice one out there today. And you can see some of those clouds and even some mountain showers in the Cascades at times today. But boy, it was nice and mild. In fact, when I put this together, it clicked up another degree. So 61, actually, our unofficial high today. 55 is where we should be for this time of year. 73, our record. That was set back in 1960. 48, our low this morning. So once again, a very mild start to our day. 35 is normal. And 25, our record low set in 1964. Sunrise, 657. And the sun sets tonight for us at 718. Let's take a look now at those Thursday temperatures. We will see a weak cold front move through over night tonight and into Thursday and that'll take our temperatures down just a little bit tomorrow. In fact, back to about normal for this time of year. Uh, Sammy Hager would love these, this map right here. Lots of 55s on our map. And if you listen to music, you know what I'm talking about. 55 in Moses Lake, Afreda, Quincy, Wenatchee, Anyat, Chelan mid 50s. Let's just say in general for our viewing area as we get you through Thursday. Let's take a look now at that surface loop tonight. Mostly clear skies, breezy conditions. We're expecting that tonight. In fact, downright windy in some locations. Here we are right through our area. Low temperatures tonight, primarily in the mid 30s. So lows will go back a little bit closer to normal too. As we get you into Friday then and end our work week, uh, we will see uh, mostly cloudy skies to partly cloudy skies skies for Friday. It will warm up somewhat. A ridge of high pressure building back up just for a bit over the Pacific Northwest. A very quiet day for Friday with highs in the upper 50s. Getting you into Saturday, a little bit of a storm system moving up from the southwest will begin to bring some clouds our way on Saturday, but it's also going to bring a nice warm airflow up at us, and that means temperatures once again into the lower 60s for Saturday, so a beautiful start to the weekend. Sunday, mostly cloudy skies. This system finally swings through. Our shower activity will be mainly late, late in the evening on Sunday. During the day, we're expecting highs in the low 60s once again. Wind returns on Monday, so breezy conditions. Low pressure here, high pressure and low pressure, and that's creating a very windy scenario for Monday with high temperatures uh, right around that 60 degree mark. And then by the end of our forecast on Tuesday, expect increasing clouds. It will be mild with high temperatures around 60. But yeah, here's another storm system and it's bringing a good area of wet uh, precipitation our way and that will happen probably late Tuesday into Wednesday. Let's take a look at that seven day forecast now. 35 more like it for us overnight tonight. 55 we mentioned a little cooler tomorrow. Friday we'll see temperatures near 60 with partly cloudy conditions. 61 on Saturday it will be mostly cloudy and then a chance for rain very late in the evening on Sunday but not before we climb to 62 and look at Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday of next week. Remember Monday, a little windy, but 60 degrees. Tuesday looks beautiful, mostly sunny with a high then of 61. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Introducing Alpine Air Man. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. 
We offer the best deals on high-efficiency carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Live channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. The Wenatchee Wild wrap up the home part of the regular season at home tonight against the Penticton V's at the Town Toyota Center. Penticton is the class of the BCHL this year, having already claimed the regular season championship and the league's best record. Wenatchee has clinched the number seven seed heading into the postseason and will face Salmon Arm in the first round of the playoffs. Associate head coach Tom Rudrud says the Wild are still focusing on tonight and not looking ahead to the playoffs. We want to keep doing what we're do we've been doing recently because that's what will help us have success. We don't want to back off at all. Um, we went through that six win streak and we were doing a lot of things well. Well, we started slipping a little bit and then the, we, we stopped doing those little things and, and as a result, we didn't have a lot of success for a while. And so we've, we've gotten on this roll a little bit where we're doing the little things. We want to keep the uh, pedal to the, the metal and keep going forward doing those things. So we're, we're not uh, look, I mean, we're, we're looking ahead to the playoffs, but we have to look at it game by game. Redbird says the little things include finishing checks and taking care of the defensive end of the ice. Well, I think we, we've uh, kind of caught fire a little bit. Guys are doing the little things very well. Um, we're, we're winning battles for pucks. We're finishing our hits. And, and uh, when we do those things, we seem to have a lot of success. Other things follow in place, and, and uh, it's really been good to see. Now, while Penticton has had Wenatchee's number over the past few seasons, the voice of the Wild, Arch Ecker, says he wouldn't bet against Wenatchee in this one tonight. They've got a, a, a high-caliber team right now that's got a lot of college commits. I think last time we played them, I think 17 of the guys on the ice that were dressed that night had their Division I college commits already in place. So, so it goes. We've had our hands full with them of late. You know, for a long time since we joined the BCHL, we were kind of neck and neck with them. And uh, of late, it's kind of slanted the other way, and we've been a little behind. But, you know, our first game of the year, you go back to that, and we came out of the shoot, and we lost 3-2 in, uh, in overtime to them on the road. Um, you know, they're a good team, but, you know, when we're playing well, you know, it's not like they're knocking us around. I mean, you think normally, you know, a number one seed against a number seven, you're like, well, that's probably not going to be short work. But I'll tell you what, I, our guys are 100% capable of keeping up with them when we do the things that Tom alluded to just a, a few moments ago. Well, Angie and Penticton, Penticton, that is, drop the puck at 6 o'clock tonight at the Town Toyota Center. You can still get tickets at WenatcheeWildHockey.com. We had more with Arch and Tom on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. You can find that on our website. Well, staying on the ice, the Seattle Kraken pulled off a second win in a row in NHL play last night. Seattle came from behind to beat the Arizona Coyotes 4-2 on two goals by Carson Soucy and one each by newcomer Daniel Sprong and Morgan Geeky. Seattle outshot the Yotes 39-26 in a back-and-forth contest. Keller. Play it along. Keller's got it again. Put to the front and shot the goal. It's Smoltz. but a lot of those goals set up by Clayton Keller. Susie with a shot, and he scores to a screen. And the Kraken have tied it at one. Comes right back, and now the Coyotes want to go. Here's an opportunity. In with it is Richie. Richie scores! Nick Richie! And it's 2-1. to Ten remaining in the cap will be Anko Minor. Chance over the line, and they score. And that's Daniel Sprong. And Daniel Sprong coming over at the trade deadline, and it's a 2-2 game. You never know what happens in the offseason. You never know. As this one will be playing along, back out high. Done with a shot at Eagle. That's Susie. And he scores. Carson Susie has made it 3-2. Opportunity here. Fisher trying to go wide. To the front. Stop. Rebound, cuts in front, right through the crease, and they can't finish it off. Ends up behind that Lind. To the front, across, they score, Geeky. Wide open cage. And the Kraken with a 4-2 lead. Coyotes just couldn't get anything generated in the final minute. 
Kraus one final shot, and that's it. And the Seattle Kraken get their first win against the Coyotes. Coach Dave Haxtall says despite a lapse in the second period, the Kraken played solid hockey for most of the game. You know, it was a, it was a hard-working game for us. Uh, pretty consistent, pretty consistent effort throughout. Um, you know, really, we we got a little bit sloppy with the puck during the second period, and that that cost us a couple chances against. But um, you know, the, the guys did a really good job of uh, you know regaining that composure and um, did a good job in the third period uh, with you know playing with the lead and playing playing hard, playing smart. Seattle's off until Saturday when it visits the L.A. Kings at 7.30. Kraken will try to do something for the first time in its inaugural season, and that's when three in a row. You can watch the broadcast on Root Sports Northwest. Well, the Mariners, uh, actually, let's get to Washington State. Cougars have a quarterfinal game in the men's NIT tournament coming up tonight. WSU is in Provo, Utah to face the BYU Cougars. Washington State, 21-14. Brigham Young, 24-10. Games at 6 on ESPN2. Winner gets a trip to Madison Square Garden in the semifinals against the winner of Texas A&M and Wake Forest. Bonaventure and Xavier already punched their tickets to New York with quarterfinal wins last night. All right, let's get to the Mariners. Cubs uh, played to a 5-5 tie yesterday in Cactus League Baseball in Peoria. Seattle trailed 5-2 in the bottom of the eighth when Chris Ford helped the Mariners get closer. This is towered out to right field and <laughs> Mike Ford clears the berm. That was a blast. Two run home run for Mike Ford. Yeah, that was a blast. Then in the ninth, Spencer Packard. Who? Spencer Packard stepped to the plate with two on and two out for Seattle. Hope you guessed over 1,000. On the ground and into right field. Have yourself a day, Spencer Packard. You have tied this game with two outs and two strikes in the ninth inning. Nicely done. Ball's behind in the count, still picks up a base hit. It was hit hard, too. He barreled it up. Take a look at the pitch. Fastball out over the plate. And pulls it through the right side of the infield. And the Mariners with a chance to win the ball game. Robbie Ray made his debut pitching four innings, allowed two-run home run. Other than that, he struck out five. Seattle's off today. We'll play Cleveland in Goodyear, Arizona, tomorrow afternoon at 105. Real quick on the Les Schwab prep scoreboard from yesterday. First of all, in soccer, Eastmont, Skyline, Moses Lake, Efreda, Cascade, Quincy, Okanagan, and Oroville, all winners in baseball yesterday. It was Wenatchee over West Valley. Moses Lake beat Ike, Efreda, Chelan, Cascade, also winners. And on the softball pitch, Wenatchee, Efreda, Cascade, and Omac all winning. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom Grant. Back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And finally tonight, an estimated 1.5 tons of garbage was picked up last weekend at the annual Moses Lake Lakeshore Cleanup event. Among the estimated 70 volunteers were 14 Moses Lake High School students, 13 of them ROTC cadets. The school district says the students combined to put in 42 hours of community service Saturday and collected 14 large trash bags of garbage that included environmentally dangerous tangled fishing line. The late cleanup effort is a project of the Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District. Way to go. Now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thank you very much, Grant. On uh, the Thursday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley, we're here in downtown with the lovely and talented Linda Haglund. Let folks know what they're going to learn about tomorrow morning. You're going to learn about a mural project we're doing downtown. If you're an artist, listen in. Can't wait. That is tomorrow with Linda Haglund and everything else. So you get to Thursday going right here on Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Grant, back to you. Linda and Dan, thank you very much. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.
The NCW Life Channel offers marketing packages that help you build your brand and sell your products and services. From traditional TV ads to targeted digital campaigns, let us help you build your customer base. Call NCW Life Channel today.